special uh, testimony today that is going to share uh, what God has done in his heart. And I'm just so uh, overwhelmed right now. I'm so uh, just overwhelmed by God's grace. How many know we don't deserve God's grace? How many know that God blesses us in spite of us? Let, let's put uh, Nacho's picture up here uh, on, the, on the wall so that you can see it. Um, this is a special time in my life because uh, in 1994... Uh, when I was serving my life sentence, just barely begin to serve my life sentence, God put this, some dude in my path. And um, he was a gang member from what is now the biggest gang in the world, and he gave his life for his gang and for drugs, and uh, he just sold out for the devil, and he ended up getting a, a life sentence. But for some reason, God crossed our paths. And I remember, one of the things that I remember is we used to argue about the Bible. And we didn't know, none of us, I was a Christian, he wasn't, but none of us knew anything about the Bible at that time. But we just wanted to argue about revelations. And uh, we would go to trade class together and we would argue about the Bible, but we didn't know that God was just moving something in our lives. Um, he was working something out in our lives. And uh, eventually, uh, Brother Nacho, um, he's going to tell his story, but one of the things that I remember is that he got caught with a knife. They raided his house, or his house, his cell, and uh, he got caught with a knife, and he, and he got sent to the hole, and uh, I remember that God put it in my heart, he, my God put it in my heart, he said, you know what, get a small Bible, and ask a staff member to go back there in the hole and slide it underneath uh, his cell, give him a Bible, and so I gave the staff member the Bible, and um, he did that, and the staff member s slid his, it underneath the, in the, on the cell, and through the course of events, God touched Brothers Nacho hard, and I remember uh, after he got out the hole, it was in a Christian a service just like this, filled with people, and he stood up and he gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. In front of everybody, he surrendered to God. And he surrendered to God, and God began to work in his life, and actually, he became my celly. So... You know, I know my wife is here, but I lived with Nacho for some time. <laughs> and we didn't know anything about the Bible, but I remember we used to have, we used to have Bible conferences in the cell. Remember that, Nacho? We were like 19 years old, serving life sentences, didn't know when we are going to get out. The devil said we're going to die in prison. And I remember we would put on a tape of a preacher, and we'll be praising the Lord in the cell, and, and we would have our Bibles out. It would be a Friday night. Everybody else was partying, getting high, and all that stuff. And we were just preparing for whatever it is that God had for our life. And we didn't realize the plan of God because he's so great and he's so marvelous. And I, and, 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 I, and I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Man, I can't even explain it. And, and we became part of a revival in prison. And, and lo and behold, 20 years later, me and Brother Nacho are together again behind the pulpit. Uh, let's give the Lord a hand praise for Brother Nacho as he comes up. And by the way... By the way, come up here, Brother Nacho. By the way, this is, Brother Nacho has been out of prison for, I think, less than a week now. Come up in here, Brother Nacho. And you, you are witnessing, you are witnessing prophetic fulfillment. If you don't believe that God is alive, if you walk out of this place today and you don't believe that God is alive, then, then I don't know what is going to help you. Because God is just so good. God is so good. Brother Nacho, share with us what God has done in your life. Take your time and just declare the mighty works of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. I'm still, I'm still amazed for me just be standing here today before you. Amen. 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 It's all Jesus. It's all Jesus. As he was sharing <clears throat> a week ago Saturday, I was still in a cell with a life sentence. And it all began 
when God started putting people in my path. I was, uh, as a young man, I was out of control. I didn't want to listen to God. I don't want to listen to nobody. You know, uh, the generation I grew up with in, in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, you had a, a gang epidemic, uh, the drug, uh, that crack cocaine hit the streets. You know, there were young men, kids running around with, with guns bigger than them. And the devil was, was deceiving many, many, many young lives as he is today in society, deceiving the young generation. I want to talk to the young generation because that's where I started. I started as a young man not wanting to listen. God had put people in my path and, and I just didn't want to listen to them. I will go to the corner and, and I see a guy coming with the Bible and I will run. That's not for me. In 1993, I, I got caught up in a, on a 187. I was charged for murder. Because at the time, I'm just going to give you a little lapse of, uh, of, of my testimony. I ended up fighting this case. My first initial uh, charge was uh, first-degree murder. They wanted to give me life without parole. Life without because they say that I ambushed the guy. And um, unfortunately, uh, I started fighting my case as a juvenile. I lost my physics. I got tried as an adult. I was 17 years old. And even then, I didn't want to listen. Even then, knowing that I was going to get life without, I didn't want to listen to God. I don't want to listen. Why? Because I had a lot of anger. I had a lot of anger. I had a lot of hurt because of the many things that, I, that happened to me when I was a young man. I grew up at a, with a single parent. I'm the middle of three. I have an older brother and a younger brother. And I just started, I dropped out of school. I started going to ditching parties. You know, the devil paints the picture. They have a, the devil paints a beautiful picture, but we never see what's in the background. The spider webs and the, and the ugliness. And I joined the gang at a very young age, as Brother Brian was saying. When I was in the county jail, at 18 years old, from juvenile hall, they sent me to the county jail. That was my birthday present. And they, and they put me in the, the men's county jail. If ever there was an ugly place to be, it's that place. But little young, with a young man with an attitude, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go in there and prove myself. And I fit in, and I started getting in trouble in there. But I met this man in there one time where he was giving a Bible study. And I remember that every, every time in, inside this dorm we were in, he would have a Bible study. He would have a Bible study. And I would look from far away. For some reason, I would just look at him. And one day, he came up to me, and he said, you know what? I see that you're always looking at us when we're having Bible study. And I'm like, oh, well, you don't. <laughs> it's a free country. <laughs> and he started sharing the gospel with me. And I didn't listen to him because I was angry. I was an angry young man. I'm like, man, okay. But he told me, I just want to let you know that Jesus will give you rest. Jesus will give you rest. And at that time in my life, I, I was, like I said, I was facing life. I didn't care. I wanted to make a name for myself. I was preparing my mind to do all this time. And after that, my life continued to go on a, on a, on a, on a, on a down spiral. I lost my case. And I ended up getting 50, uh, 20 years to life because of my crime. I was young. They, they sent me to the youth authority. But God. I want everybody to say, but God. but God. You know, sometimes we think that God ain't working. We think that prayers ain't being answered. God was orchestrating everything behind the scene. I ended up going to the Youth Authority YTS, and God had little soldiers right there. There's little hit men. I ended up going to the dorm where you had... Uh, a few Christians there, and I, I, that's where I met Brother Brian and other brothers that were there. And I would always look at Brian, and he was always sharing the word of God with somebody there. And I used to look, you know, when you look at somebody like, man, what's, what's wrong with that guy? 
you know, big old tall youngster. And we will talk about the Bible. Now, he, I, I will hear him talking about Revelations and uh, chapter 9 is talking about the, the atomic bomb and, and, the, and the locusts or helicopters. And, you know, we all get curious when, when, we, when we. And I remember Brian always started ministering to me. I was broken in here. I had no hope. I just didn't care. And I remember Brian from far away, he used to look at me and he used to scream. Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ shall give you life. <laughs> and I say, what's wrong with this guy? And then I'll see him the next day. Awake, you who sleep, arise from the death, and Christ shall give you life. That's the way I memorize the scripture. <laughs> At the time, I was getting involved in things I shouldn't have been getting involved in. I had a lot of my ex-homeboys there. And I ended up in the hole. And they were doing this investigation. And I remember the staff. Days later, I had nothing, in, I, was, I had nothing inside. I, I was doing my routine, my push-ups, and, you know, I was doing that prison thing. And the burpees and the, and for, for you young guys that, 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 he, that looked at, look at that show lockup, it's a lie. Don't get fooled. Don't get fooled by things that you see on TV, because it's all a lie. Your best friend, your homie is your worst enemy. And that's what I learned the hard way. And I remember that the staff came up to my cell and he goes, Flores. And he picked up the little, little Bible and he went like this. This one is little, I think. I, I, I want to get a bigger one. But it was like, it was a little Bible. And, and, and he looked at me and I'm like, he goes here and he slid it under my cell. And I remember grabbing it and it, and it was a little New Testament red Bible. And I was working out, and I remember I, I, I grabbed it, and, and I looked at the little a light that was in the window, and I opened it. And, and Brother Brian had wrote a little note in there. He says, you know, we love you, and we're praying for you. And just those words in itself, to me, meant the world at that time. I was, they were going to transfer me to state prison earlier than they should have because of the incident that happened. And I put the Bible down, and I started working out. I started doing my thing, and at nighttime, when I was done, I started reading chapter 1, Matthew, chapter 2, Matthew, chapter 3, and I came to chapter 11, verse 28. And Jesus says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy burden, and I'll give you rest. And the Lord remembered, and I remembered when that man, when I was in the county, years, like a year and a half prior where he said Jesus will give you rest and that verse lit up like a neon sign to me and I just I, I broke down right there Amen. praise the Lord that in the end they, sh they put me back in the building right back to the same building and brother Brian another brother Jojo Godinez they started inviting me to church hey let's go to the chapel let's go to the chapel with us I'm like no nah, because over there everything was segregated you know, you have the blacks over here, and then you got your Mexicans. If you were Catholic, you go to the Mexicans were in the Catholic. The Protestants, they were just black. Right, and then Brother Brian, they used to go to the Protestants. I'm like, nah, I'm all right. One time, and I, a month later, there I go. And that's when I gave my life to the Lord. Best decision I ever made. I could honestly say that to this day, this was in 1995, December. To this day, God has not let me down yet. I, w I was sent to prison, and we were separated. And 10 years later, while we were in the prison, I run into Brian again in the level two. And right before we left, we prayed for each other. He prayed for me. He said, God is sending us out on a mission. We're going to go to the state prison. And I remember saying, state prison. 
I, I, I'm with guys my age. And, and all that American Me and the Boulevard Nights and all those movies that I've watched as a kid. Oh, man, I don't want to go to prison. But God did something great. God really, I had things to learn. And God guided me all through the good times and the bad times. The Lord was always there. I was the first Christian in my family. And I would pray, Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you should be saved, you and your household. And I would pray and I would pray. And I will pray for my family. How many of us have families that are unsaved here? I think we all got people who are unsaved here. Children, brothers, sisters who are running the streets, who are out of control. Prison couldn't change me. YA couldn't change me. What changed me? Somebody was praying for me. Somebody was praying for me. It was those people that God put in my path. Those men that volunteered and to the chaplains and go and, and out of their time and share the word of God with us. There's few of you here that I ran into. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That see me when I was in the prison. And to make the long story short, I had to go to, I went to board. And I was denied four times, three times prior. This was my fourth time. Um, I was before the board members. And the commissioners, they started questioning me about my, my crime. And I had a bad crime. I, I, I was an ex-gang member. And, and the gang I used to be from, they would, they're like, oh, you used to be from so-and-so. Oh, no. And I had like a big, like the world on my shoulders. And after the, the hearing, they brought me back after they were deliberating. The commissioner looked at me, and she just looked at me, and they started, they were going to say the verdict. And if they were going to deny me, it was going to be a three-year denial. They were going to tell me, come back in three years, and let's see what this is. And by this time, I'm already doing 20. Another three, okay. And the lady looked at me, and she said, Mr. Flores, we find today that you're not a danger to society no more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When she said that, that was all the Lord. That was the Lord. Last Wednesday, last week Wednesday, my lawyer called, I called my lawyer and she's like, the governor didn't reverse your denial. You're going home. And the institution didn't tell me nothing. And then on Friday, they call me up, and they go, Mr. Flores, you need to sign some papers. And I'm signing the papers, and it was for my release. And I got released on Saturday. But I made <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I made a decision a long time ago. That I was going to serve the Lord no matter what. I'm going to go. I'm going to reach for the prize for the high calling of God in my life. And you know what? I just thank the brothers that God put in my path. You never know what God could do. Just by your presence. Just by a, a, a God bless you. Every time I would see Brian, it was like a cold water in the desert. Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ should give you life. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Mothers, I just want to say, parents, don't quit praying. Don't quit on your kids, on your loved ones who are not saved. There is power in prayer. There is power in prayer. I prayed for my family. I got on my knees daily. So, Lord, your word says in Acts 16, 31, if I believe in you, my family is going to get saved. And I had to put my part. It's not just praying and let God do it. Like the microwave, you know, we live in a fast generation. Things are moving so fast for me, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm amazed. It's 
But God never fails. God never fails. And I prayed and I prayed and my God started working in my family, started bringing my family here. You know, it is by God's grace that I'm standing here before you today. You know what? Uh, I made a promise to the Lord that I'm going to continue no matter what. Today I could have been somewhere else. Oh, yeah, I'm out 20 years. But what better place to be than right here today? What better place to be to the Lord? I want to thank you guys. Now, Brother Brian, thank you. God bless you. Jesus Lord. Amen. 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 Don't, don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Get your, yeah, you can get your Bible. In um, 1996, me and Nacho were cellies, and they came to our door, and they said, they, they, they told everybody, they said, get it locked down, and everybody's going to prison. And I knew that God had us on a mission. And so I told all the brothers, I said, listen, we're going on a mission. We're going to prison. I think I was 20 years old at that time. And I said, everybody, anoint everybody with oil. Anoint your bunkies with oil because you're going on a mission. And so uh, me and Nacho prayed for each other. I anointed him with oil. He anointed me with oil. We took off. Boom. Big revival hit the prison system. Hundreds of people coming to the Lord. Um, Ten years later, like he said, I bumped into him again. He was still serving the Lord. And by that, time, by that time, there were several brothers that were not serving the Lord, so it's not that easy, especially being a young man. And then all of a sudden, we're serving the Lord for about, I don't know, half a year. All of a sudden, they reclassified him, and they locked him down. And I, they told me, Nacho's in handcuffs in, in, the, in the program office. And I had been in that prison for 10 years already, so I had a little juice. And I ran to the program office, and I seen the sergeant, and I seen Nacho in the corner in handcuffs. And I asked the sergeant, I said, Sergeant, can I go in there and I pray? Can I pray for him? And the sergeant gave me favor and said, hey, go in there. And I got, and I went in the corner. Nacho was in handcuffs. Remember that? And I laid hands on him. I said, Nacho, God has you on a mission. We don't know why. We don't know why, but God got you on a mission. And I prayed for him. And, and 15 minutes later, I was in the chapel and I seen them, them carrying him out in handcuffs. Out of nowhere. Just out of nowhere. About six months ago, I got miraculously cleared to go into Sentinella Prison to preach the gospel. Many of you remember that. Guess who was on the yard? Nacho was on the yard. <laughs> Nacho was on the yard, and prior to that, he had seen me on TBN when I came on TBN. And he was, he was watching in the cell. God, God, but God, but God, but God. Can't explain it, but God. 20 years later, Nacho, come sit, stand, stand right here. 20 years later, we meet again, this time in the house of the Lord. I want to ask uh, 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 Pastor Danny and some of, the, uh, some of the elders of the church, the leaders of the church, uh, to come around Brother Nacho. Uh, Pastor Danny is one of the chaplains that used to come and minister us in prison. Uh, so let's give the Lord a hand praise. And there was another chaplain. There was another chaplain here. I want you to come, come up here, brother. Come up here, brother. This is another chaplain that was in Sentinella Prison. Is there any other one? Uh, another of the chaplains. That... Amen. Um, and, and what we're going to do is we're going to anoint uh, Brother Nacho for this next season in his life. But I also want to say Pastor Danny is involved in a Christian home in Oxnard. So if you have any family members that need to get away from Long Beach, Compton, Paramount, Downey, wherever it is, and they need to go into a home, uh, we have these flowers available after a service. You can get with him. That could be one intervention for your family members. But we're going to anoint uh, Brother Nacho and pray over him. Brother Nacho, in the name of Jesus, listen, you have been called to this generation. God has released you for such a time as this. God has saved you and he has spared you so that you can come out here and do his will and give your life to his kingdom. And so right now, I want to ask that all the believers just raise your hand to a nacho right where you're at. I want you to participate in this prayer. And we want to pray for him. Lord God, in Jesus' name. Lord God, we just set nacho apart right now. Lord, we can't explain your grace, but you've done it, Father God. You have delivered him and saved him. When man said he was going to die, you said, no, he shall awake and live. 
And Father God, you have spared him and you have miraculously released him from prison for such a time as this. We pray a double anointing upon his life. We pray a fresh anointing upon his life, Lord God, that he be used right now to preach your word, to share your love to this dying generation, Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord God, protect him. Lord God, send him around people that will be his mentors and help him, Lord God. Hallelujah. And Father God, during this season, this new season in his life, we commit him to you. Have your way, Father God. Have your way, Father God. In Jesus' name, have your way. We thank you, Father God. Have your way, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, yeah. amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise. Yeah. Amen. God bless you guys. If you have your Bible, if you have your Bible, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. God is good. By the way, by the way, part of Nacho's story is he shared with me, part of his testimony is that is his first suit in his entire life. Amen. Man, in his entire life. I remember when I first got out, my wife came in and bought me a suit. I still wear it today. I ain't going to tell you which one it is. Life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. 